Hi there. I'm Keith Bocock, um, a Tynmouth artist who has joined the band here at uh, the Voyage, and um, uh, I, I'm actually uh, just here to tell you a little bit about myself, what I do, uh, about my history. Um, I'm a, what I still call an amateur artist in that I'm still learning every single day. I've only really been painting seriously probably in the last 10 years. Um, uh, after I retired, I found I had a bit more time and um, literally Timmouth embraced me as I embraced Timmouth. And uh, I joined uh, uh, exhibitions in Targ, uh, close by to Voyage here, uh, uh, and also in the Timmouth Art Society. And by working with them and learning from people about me, um, I've improved over the years. Uh, I, I feel that um, the art quarter here has really developed in the last 10 years and um, it's becoming very much well known uh, around Devon now and people travel from quite a distance now to see um, some of the pictures that are on offer uh, and all the different styles that there are. And my styles, um, generally speaking, I would say that probably I'm Majoring on scenery, uh, um, I started off as probably more of a photographer. I was always interested in uh, nature and uh, the world around me yeah. and, uh, uh, and geography. And uh, I just like being out in the open air and, and experiencing nature. And so I was always photographing um, everything about me. And often very particular of how I got it and framed it and so on and so forth and the lighting. And um, over the years, as I visited a lot of galleries, like a lot, of, a lot of us do, I was looking and thinking, I think I could do something a bit like that. And so that's how I started in painting, say about 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And um, anyway, um, it grew from there. I did one or two paintings and friends said, Oh, I think you might be able to sell some of these, so that's the way I started. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. I love your work. There's so much details as well. I think that's it. Um, because I've always been keen on observing, I was very interested in birds and nature and identifying things. So it's the, the minor details are uh, always important when you're an observer. So uh, consequently, I think that's worked into my work as well, because when I see something, um, I work quite a lot from photographs. Not everything is exactly as that photograph, but they are my photographs. Uh, and what I might do is I might have four or five different photographs that I've taken, shall we say, of this shot here, where um, uh, I actually went up to somewhere near the golf club at, um, at, at Tenmouth Golf Club there, because I knew that, that that view meant so much to us whenever we actually were on the way home to our home in Tenmouth, whether we'd been up com a country or somewhere like that. Wow. And I called it nearly there, because this is what we used to say, oh, we're nearly there now. And, um, and we, I also imagined that quite a lot of other people who live in there, uh, uh, this area, um, or visit it, you know, would actually even have the same sort of thoughts in their mind uh, at the time. Like but um, I say, <laughs> I had about four or five photographs and I, I took bits from each, but generally it was important I got it right. But, uh, um, uh, but again, the detail I was looking for, I always had in my mind that there would be an evening light shining down the estuary so you could catch just a little bit of the colour in yeah. the cliffs there uh, at the nest. Yeah, lovely. I haven't actually seen this view because I, I don't live here in Tinmouth, but I would love to go there to see it for, my, for myself. Yeah, sometimes the trees can be obscure in it, uh, but uh, funnily enough, um, you know, it's often if you speak to people who visit this area as holiday makers, mm. um, they sometimes comment on that view. And uh, if they've seen that, you know, mm. whereas this one up here, um, I actually 
uh, it's from an area of, uh, of Timbers that not quite so many people know because this is on the um, on the north side of Timbers and you walk up through an area called East Cliff and to Mules Park and further up the cliffs there uh, uh, and there's a lovely parkland area there but of course uh, quite a few people tend to uh, visitors probably tend to stick to more like the the, the pier area and the walk, the beautiful yeah. walks there are there, and don't go up to the higher points. You can get some really interesting views there. So, again, I look to find something just a little bit different there. You know. Yeah, it's so. lovely. I will have to do a little adventure here in Timber soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. So I'll uh, stop with a few other questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what uh, do you get inspired by when you paint? Well, I've probably actually answered that a little bit already, but um, I think the thing is, is that um, it, it's a feeling when you're actually um, in the open air and what you see. Um, I I love the glint of water. Um, I call it the the South Devon glint, where you get that rippling effect and uh, the beautiful reflections. And so it's reflections off water and in water. Um, they quite inspire me. Um, I mean, that that one up there actually is um, my nearest thing to probably an abstract painting. Probably that one, this one here, yeah. uh, where Not in fact nice. it is actually a real picture. Uh, it's from photographs really? I took, yeah. um, um, uh, and it's a reflection of a boat in water. But wow. you would need uh, to actually really look at it long and hard and yeah. to actually realise it. But again, it's what I'm saying is, is that nature's actually provided us with so many beautiful pictures. And sometimes um, I feel that sometimes you need an artist to try and actually capture something that you may not have seen um, at, at first glance and then just captured it and probably blown it up. You know, like sometimes I might get a, a, a take a photograph like that and then I will zoom into it and do that, just get that get bit that and, and then zoom into it and, and make a new picture out wow. of what I've got there, you see. So it, oh, that's it's really that's, clever. So that's the interesting thing about detail, really. So the inspiration is that lighting, mm. um, I love, like most people, nice sunset, nice, oh, a, a nice sunrise, <laughs> uh, you know, those sort of things. But uh, the light just getting through the trees and, uh, um, and and highlighting something in the woodland area or something like that. Those sort That's of things gorgeous, that inspire yeah. me. Um, so what do you enjoy the most when you paint to paint? I suppose that would be landscapes like these. I, I enjoy all sorts, really. I, I, I've always loved water. So anything that's in, including water, mm. I think that is one of the things that I'm drawn to painting quite a bit. Um, but I do like painting in certain different ways. I, I paint in oils. That is my paint uh, mm. uh, of choice now. Um, but when I get a successful painting, like this one was here, mm. um, um, I get what they call G clay prints made of them. And these are really good quality prints, which have got inks that actually can um, stand up to being in daylight up to 75 years in daylight. 75 years? Yeah. So in other words, unlike probably what you might get with a watercolour, if it was in um, a, a, a real sunny position, you might worry that it might fade after mm. a period of time. Whereas the prints that we've got here, uh, colour fast up to 75 right. years so uh, that's been a good selling point for me when I've been selling extra copies of something yeah. that I've done you know so that, you know that's uh, has worked well but it's oil paints that's actually really excites me I love the fact that they're so well they're quite sensual paints really the softness mm. of it and the fact that you can make so many colours out of it and and you can, it doesn't dry too quickly, but it's easy to get so many different textures with it and finishes with it from being very thin right to the very thick. Like this one is a, a picture here that's going in the exhibition that starts on 
and the 3rd of May here at Boyge, which is one where I've used a palette knife here, which is not often my normal uh, uh, tool. It's usually a brush for me, but I wanted to actually uh, get the the ruggedness of the the rocks and also the cliffs um, into that picture, and also with the the lines of the sea coming in with that glint I was I telling love, you I about. Love that, that painting. It looks <laughs> yeah. amazing. Um, I, I've been a, a admirer of um, one particular local artist who's very famous, um, uh, who actually Alan Cotton his name. Right. And he's a Devon artist and he's painted with uh, Prince Charles and oh, so on. And he's got fantastic pictures of the Himalayas and, and so on and so forth. And he's used a palette knife to the great, ah. uh, 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 fantastic sort of finish with it. Do you always have ideas of what to paint or are there times you can't paint anything? Like, can it take weeks or even months before you? touch your brush again? Um, the thing is, is that I suppose I've, I'm always carrying a camera around with me, in my phone camera. Mm. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm often taking photographs just uh, half the time with a picture, possible picture in mind. So a, if you like, I'm building up a library of photographs all the time. Uh, and the thing is, the reason why I use photographs, it, it is the biggest way of testing yourself to see whether you are improving. If yeah. you think about it, um, uh, if I asked anybody to come paint some cliffs and a, a, a beach and a, an estuary or whatever like that, and you did it in your mind, no matter how good you were, it wouldn't be as good as having that photograph there and you actually um, sketching it from the photograph and then painting from mm -hmm. the photograph and then comparing what you've done to, to, to what was there. And, and when you see the mistake, you can go back and keep improving mm -hmm. and improving and improving. So um, that's why I use photographs so much, mm -hmm. really. So I have, I've got on my computer lots and lots of photographs. You always have something. That's to right. To this is it. So I've always had to have to, something to go back. Mm. Well, you know, too. Um, sometimes I like a change, though. So if I've been painting landscapes for uh, a few months or whatever, I might decide. Well, actually, I might like to do a portrait now. Um, now, portraits are something that you wouldn't actually paint generally to actually sell. Yeah. Um, so you might do it just for your own enjoyment or for a friend or something like that. Uh, you know, but I do do commissions, so uh, the thing is, I can do that. But I, I love doing the portrait, and again, that's that's in my opinion, one of the biggest tests of an artist is actually capturing somebody's face. So you would not take a photograph; you would do it then, like when they are sitting down or. No, actually, I would work from photographs because say, yeah. uh, the thing is, is I'm a slow painter. Mm. They will have nodded off to sleep so many times if they've been sat up for hours. <laughs> 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 so the thing is, uh, no, I will, I will work from photographs, but it's essential if I was ever going to do a portrait of anybody that you would really get good lighting, mm. and um, uh, and when you're doing that, you. You only need to think of a, BT, uh, a, a TV program, for instance, where you know, you've know you got a drama there and you've got good lighting from this side and just a little bit on that, just to give a moulding of a face and those sort of things. So I, I love all that and, and test, you know, seeing the slightly different colours from here and there. Mm. And so it's a good test for doing that. So that's a change, just as like mm. um, doing an abstract Again, it's yeah. a change really, but the inspiration uh, uh, really comes from uh, my photographs I'm taking all the time. Oh, cool. um, do you believe that anyone can be an artist or do you, do you need to be able to draw well, do you think, in your opinion? Yeah, I think the thing is, uh, I believe that yes, anybody can, anybody can, but uh, the thing is, is people have different skills and leaning towards different um, uh, things that interest them. So I would say is always draw or paint what you're interested in. 
Um, sometimes it doesn't have to be sold. It, you can just paint for yourself uh, and paint something that you like. Uh, but always read books, look at YouTube, learn from the people about you, join a local society. That all helps because you're learning all the time, just as I am, Stu. Great. All right. Thank you very much, Keith. Okay. Thank you.